This guy should have been here already. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's more people in here than normal. There's at least three. And we put up all the flyers and the streamers and shit. You sit through a 10-minute set, you get a free rental. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad deal. They really... They did not like when we reenacted Die Hard. Well, I suggested Brokeback Mountain. And I was okay with it. But the script that you handed me, all the pages were stuck together. Excuse me, is this is this the gig here? Oh shit, you're our guy. I'm the guy. This is the place? Yeah, this is the place. Just get on uh, up. Uh, yeah. Already? They're all warmed up and primed for you. Who warmed them up? Uh, wait, I, wait, wait, a couple, couple I was told I was told eight fifteen. And it's seven fifteen. I thought I'd have some time to, you know, jerk off in the green room and stuff, get my head kind of level they're, before they're getting antsy. Like we got a porn room. You can have whatever rental you want from there. Mm-hmm. Just, just hurry up before they leave. You want me to go hurry up and jerk off before I, I, yeah, I go do go, some comedy? Go already. Okay, I'll be right back. Well, do. I'll I'll go and jerk off and you fucking bring me up, okay? All right. Jesus, just do it. I have to listen to this guy talk about jerking off for 10 minutes. There's probably other customers in there. I mean, it's going to be super weird. Oh, they have Maybe a whole set, though. They got a corner system. You Blair Witch. There's a system in there? There's a madhouse. Can you can you see through the? Okay, I'm windows? edging here. Are you gonna are you gonna uh, you know? Where's the music? Is somebody gonna bring me up? I mean, highlight my uh, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for coming out to the five day rentals open mic. Uh, happy to bring up this next performer. He's a uh, trucking Daryl. Put your hands together. Hot, hot crowd. Hot crowd out here. This video store. I mean, I've toward some weird ass places, but a video store. Thank you for that. Uh, fucking energetic. Fucking for a guy who types in all caps. You think you'd get a better. Boo. Anyway, how's everybody? I haven't even started. I haven't even started, man. You you came to boo. All right. Like you said, I'm big trucking, big trucking Daryl. He left out the big, but as you can see, <laughs> unmistakable, man. That's right. I've uh, been driving a. I thought they said Godfrey was going to be here. <laughs> I met Godfrey. All right. Nice guy. I'm not even a joke about it. He's real nice. Hot off that. You know what? I'm not. I'm going to explain myself to you, sir. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm uh, <clears throat> been driving 18 wheeler for uh, over 20 years. That's right. Uh, more years than wheels. I can say that now. So, <laughs> man, and I tell you, these times they're, they're changing. You know, it's 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 political out there on the roads now. You get these people with their um, here comes the liberals. These stuff. choose choose life bumper stickers. <laughs> like, lady, you're doing 90 in a Jeep Cherokee on a donut. <laughs> you know, who's who's choosing life with that, right? That's, Where's your puppet? I'm not a puppet. I don't do the puppet anymore. Do you understand? Okay. I'm sure my puppet act is what got the, the guys to my Instagram, but I don't do the puppets anymore. It's all trucking stuff. All right. Everybody, everything is so woke now, right? You so, don't even have a mustache. So woke. People are trying to be woke. <laughs> try, try hauling 600 dead pigs through Death Valley on a 20-hour overhaul. That'll keep you woke. <laughs> hot, hot crowd. Hot crowd here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> ah, stop. It's not even any lights, and it's hot. Can you guys see me? This is, 
Yeah! Woo! All right, cool. All right, this is... uh, Take your shirt off! That's at the end. Don't fucking... Don't... Don't yell out bit. Have you guys ever been to a fucking comedy show before? God damn. I came in late. Where's your puppet? We addressed my old... I don't do puppets anymore. God damn. Crun, crun. Yeah. Why don't you guys try this? This is tough. This is, I've rebranded bomb, seven times. Should I go I, up there and... I did puppets. Like get I out? tried to do the political thing. I tried doing a Dennis Leary derivative, Bill Hicks derivative. Okay? Guy, don't and now I'm off. doing this trucking. Guy's, this guy's funny as hell. Don't take him off. I don't know. It looks like he's getting ready to fight the audience or something. Why is he I'll, sweating so much? Uh, it's fucking hot. It's not... It's not hot. It's not hot at all. You guys maybe see what these maybe, hitchhikers are wearing maybe these it's days? It's part of the bit. Okay, you pull up, you see a you see a nice tight ass and some Daisy Dukes, and you think I'm gonna get my dick sucked on the way through the Rockies, and it's a it's a dude. Mediocre. I mean. I, 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 I'm not. Tu- I, I, I'm not I, turning I, it I, down. I, if you want, if he's gonna I, suck, right? Hand me, hand me the mic. Hand me the mic. Sorry. I'm the. Ol- Please let go of the mic. Just give it. Thank you. Fuck you. Hey, Kron, give him his check, please. Give him his check, please. Here you go. Dude. Eight dollars made Settled. out to. I'll do the. If you bring me back, I'll do the puppet. We'll talk after. We'll talk. I like the sound of that, dude. I can do, I'll do we'll the talk. puppet. How about that? Maybe the puppets will work, okay? Du- double the pay next time. Dude, but I got, we I see got puppet more, first. I got eight more dollars. Okay, sweet. I'll, I'll right. do puppet now. I got puppet in the car. No. You did your time tonight, sir. We got a we got a lady. She was on The Voice. She's coming in. Can I jerk uh, off again? Yeah. Yeah. Go Everybody to the Everybody else is. I'm going to calm this Can crowd down. Can I cut down. the line, though? I think this guy's funny, dude. I like his stuff. <laughs> this, guy's the, this guy's the voice of my generation, you know? To calm these folks down, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something on while we wait for the voice lady. And it, well, it does have to do with big rigs. Uh, tonight on 5 Day Rentals, it's Blacktop. Welcome back, everybody, to Five Day Rentals. We are the video store podcast where each week we turn, we take turns picking a flick that we think meets a fun non-genre, ca- non-genre category. Jesus Christ. This round category is Revenge for the Return of Big Rigs. And this week's pick is Blacktop from the year 2000, directed by TJ Scott. As always, I'll be taking you through this um, big rig of a movie. Uh, I'm here with my good buddies, my fellow big rigs, Thumper and Pulsating Pete. How are we tonight, gentlemen? Pulsating at a consistent, maintainable rate. Sounds like you've been edging for hours. Hell yeah. I guess I've been thumping at a consistent rate. Yeah, I don't think we ever asked why we would call you Thumper. It just seemed like a good trucker name. Okay. There was no meaning to it. I think I just, Thumper is an excellent CB handle, Cron. Do I keep a little bat in my truck to thump people with? Maybe. I don't know. Well, you got to check your tire pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it don't make anything else easier than hitting it with a stick, but, you know, sure. Tried and true. Never going to break. Uh, well, we do fully support the Teamsters, so 
don't come after us with those wooden sticks. Who who out there is is more pro truck driver than five day rentals? I mean, sure, there's probably fucking you know what do you call it? Actual truck drivers, you know, producing podcasts and truck stops, right? Do you think I it's don't just? Think so. Could you just get like the ramblings of the CB radio? Well, that's <laughs> in, what like, I was going to say. Increments podcasts. I've been doing that for fucking years. That's true. And at least they're they have the potential of getting uh, much more feedback than we do, right? Anybody out there? Yeah. Put a little sound of a uh, crickets right there in that gap. <laughs> You don't think we have any? I take no. Listeners? I take zero responsibility for any gaps in this podcast. I leave adequate space for you guys to jump back in. Yeah, but, but I whenever left. I start talking, both of you start drinking. Like I, I left I, that one for the cricket sound effect. That was. Oh, uh, okay. Hold up your fucking cricket sign, so I know. Cricket mobile. <laughs> As Dan enjoys a sip, Cron, that is our sponsor this week. Very good. Mm-hmm. Do you need to cheat on your wife? Please visit Cricket Mobile. They make my or favorite uh, fentanyl ordering telephone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are wrapping up this category along with the very long season one of, uh, of this podcast. Uh, guys, I want to, I want to thank you for sitting through my 10 picks, some good, some bad, some mediocre, some you should have rated better than others. Um, and a blacktop mm-hmm. well, in a category I, all its own. I don't know if you guys are both going to rate this a five stars tonight. It, I, I go into every one of these thinking, <laughs> Got him. Yeah, could it could happen? Why not? You know, that's probably a good way to go through life, Dan. Right? Just absolute confidence. You don't ever watch one of these, and you're just like, <laughs> Dan's loving this right now. Mm. No, okay. I don't think of you. Add uh, crickets uh, there. I don't think of you as a Punisher guy that, War Zone. Uh, loves movies. <laughs> you, you don't think I love movies? No, I think you like, uh, like love to hate movies. <laughs> yeah, you like film. You're like <laughs> high art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've spending all your free time at the Salvador Deli, mm-hmm. chopping it up. We've got some stuff on here that I would consider film now. Hell yeah. Unhinged? Yeah. Black Roses? <laughs> oh yeah. Shoot that shit into space, dude. Let the aliens know what we're capable of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got records that come alive. Stay the fuck away. Mm-hmm. And fat well, Australian I mean- man that will beat your ass with a fucking hammer. And not give you a courtesy tap. Kind of like this podcast. We don't give you a courtesy tap. Uh, Because we went from breakdown from 1997 to the Oscar winning. Secret masterpiece breakdown. Go ahead. Yeah. It's a, it's a highbrow film. Yeah. To the Oscar winning Mad Max Fury Road. Bonafide masterpiece. To Blacktop. Also, Dan, I think the cold open is the courtesy tap, right? The cold open is the way of saying, hey, if you don't like this, you're not going to like the next two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, leave now. Mm-hmm. We probably should have doubled the amount of numbers from because of the cold opens. <laughs> How many <laughs> like, times? I'm not doing an hour and 20 of this shit. How many times do you think somebody has, though, been like, oh, I like Demon Knight? 
here's a podcast I've never heard, and they make it three minutes in, and they're like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. I would say 80% of the people that have... <laughs> I wonder if they think, like, oh, maybe they're, like, reading from the movie and just, like, doing a reenactment. Wait, no, they're not. What was the cold open? Was that Dan coming in as the priest? That was one of the times. Yeah, I think that was one of the times you did the priest character. Demonic forces. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that wasn't us. That's not us. (laughs) Yeah. It's been a long season, Mm -hmm. folks, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Karan Howard did uh, bring up this category. It is the last one for season one. We started this whole show with a big rigs category. Those are episodes that we've said you'll never hear. And we're ending on a big rigs category with ones that you actually would. So yeah. meatloaf was featured and I seen him on there and I was like, you know what? Yeah, that's what we're doing. The show was probably marginally better since the unrecorded, the unreleased episodes. Just a, just a hair. It's mm-hmm. just a, That's not but, true. But we didn't know what the show was then, right? Like, we didn't know. Like, I Do tell people, so? it's it started as like, a, hey, we're meeting. We're already talking once a week anyway. Why not, right? And I think it was Dan who said, fuck it. You guys watch Convoy and we'll talk about it next week. So. And here we are. Yeah. We got 15 people on our Discord. We got two hey. one-star ratings. It's great. It might not be a ton of people, but they. The one thing I can say about them is they all love tough guys don't dance. Yeah, <laughs> or they've at least watched. Thanks, it. guys. Yeah, but it is it is strange the the traffic that it's gotten. Mm-hmm. So, and I will say the the people that do come in and engage, I really enjoy. We've um, met some great friends along the way. Uh, who was it today in the Discord brought up? Uh, some good song puns based on nutting. Vestal Virgin? Uh, yeah. Vestal Virginia? I don't want to get oh, that I incorrect. Thought it was Vestal Virgin. <laughs> You're just reading that. Yeah. I I see what I want to see. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. If you're listening, any of you, you're beautiful. <laughs> were any of you familiar with Blacktop from the year 2000? Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, I saw it in a letterbox list when I was also looking up Big Rig movies and gave it zero thought. I mean, I've never heard of this, but wasn't this like a direct-to-TV? Who's even watching fucking TV movies in the year 2000? (laughs) Might have been the last one. (laughs) It it looks like an episode of The (laughs) X-Files. It's, I mean, it's shot with TV grade equipment four by three yeah i think (laughs) you guys aren't making me confident in my guess of five stars for you both uh so the second time i watched this uh uh just watch said it that it was in hd on Redbox with ads and i was like well let's try it Uh, there's no way this was was hd i don't know it was not different but I had zero ads on Redbox. Nice. I think Redbox was like taking mercy on me. Like, mm-hmm. this is the only guy that's rented this. Well, I think yeah. I, I, I didn't even it. pay for it. It was just supposed to be free with ads. Zero ads. Movie started and cont- played through. Maybe they <laughs> thought they'd like get people in with the promise of HD, and then since it's SD, they're like, you don't have to watch the the. 30 uh, Cialis commercials that don't Mm -hmm. normally pop up. I mean, you're getting a lot of Cialis commercials because isn't it like targeted ads? Because I get a lot of like, you know, is your large hog problematic? Like, that's Mm -hmm. the ads that I get, you know? Yeah, I understand. I get a lot of AA stuff and uh, Jesus things. Get a lot of like, I can't get enough blood into mine. That's the whole issue. You got to drink more, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to put more alcohol 
into your blood, and that thickens mm-hmm. your blood, so you need less blood in your hog. Isn't that thin it? No, just go with the science, bro. Okay. I've done my own research. I'm drinking. I'm drinking right now, so... Hopefully my huge dick will work tonight. And you, yeah, you keep leaning forward. The more <laughs> drunk you get. Yeah. Pretty soon I'll just uh, tripod myself. <laughs> Did you guys pause this at any moment and go get a drink? Uh, Is- I drink while watching this, yeah. <laughs> you had to. <clears throat> All right. Like yeah. I said, I, I just wanted to thank you guys for sitting through my shit. And, uh, well, we'll see how it goes in season two. Well, thank you for bringing your shit, Dan. It's much appreciated. I know that, I know you put a lot of work into your, into your picks. Yeah. But we should get into it because we've got a ton of, we've got a rewind where we'll sort of talk all about this. Yeah. Sorry. This is high emotions. Season one's ending. It's, it's all right, dude. We have Facebook now. We'll keep in touch. All right. It's fine. Nobody has fucking Facebook anymore. You guys dude. are on Facebook? No. <laughs> what? Stop. I'm just now on Instagram, Cron. You guys got to get off Facebook. Blacktop from the year 2000, directed by T.J. Scott. What do you think the T.J. stands for? Thomas James. Jeff- Jefferson. <laughs> Tom Jane? Tom mm-hmm. and Jane directed Blacktop. Chrome Pegasus is a fucking pretty sweet name. It has a pretty sweet logo, too. It's not bad. One of the highlights of this movie, if you what think about the, it. What was the other one? Fireworks Studio? Yeah. That is cool. And it was a throwback to this category for Chrome. I have never Black seen Black and Chrome. Mad Max. Uh, we opened up with some stupid-ass fairy tale music going on and uh our big rig here that we're going to get to know goliath that's the name of the truck not the character he's pulling into blacktop blacktop is the town and he's pulling into the local bar at the truck spot truck stop a uh, bar or comedy club dan well we fade in to david as he's doing his stand-up comedian routine and with some very heavy trucker, a uh, he- very heavy trucker set list here. Well, mm-hmm. set, I guess you would say. Fucking holding and just yelling into this mic like a fucking member of Wu Tang. Did you notice that? Like, what do you call that? This part of the head or the microphone, Cron? Is that the head? Yeah, sure. Yeah. The it's grill? Like the, the grill, grill, yeah, when they grab the grill like that and they just talk. He's like doing this all the time. Mm-hmm. Pretty lame ass jokes. It's fucking I solid, dude. It's fucking solid comedy, bro. <laughs> Did you guys laugh at any of these jokes? Well, I think he does a he does a joke and then he asks, Are there any truckers in the in the crowd? <laughs> and he should have been like, Well, thank fuck Christ, because that's all the material that I have. Mm-hmm. Well, you're also in a fucking truck stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who else goes there? Who operated the 80 tractor trailers that are outside? Milo. <laughs> At this point, our uh, our character Jack, he walks in. He's played by Meatloaf. Meatloaf a day. A meatloaf no. a day keeps the doctor away. Bones, you got one? We had the same joke. The same joke. I know. Mine was a meatloaf a day keeps the doctor in pay. But you guys, you guys like Marvin Marvin Lee a day, I think is his real name. Like the food or the artist? Both. Oh, yes, I was going to just say that. Marvin Lee a day. Do you like either? Uh, my wife does like a a turkey we do turkey but she also adds like stuffing a mix to it stuffers well. yeah and it's, instead of the it's breadcrumbs good. i mean that's yeah. basically what stuffing is so. pretty much but Solid. yeah it's not bad 
Throw a little ketchup on there. Uh, green beans. Yeah, that's that's white trash Thanksgiving. Yeah. I make a nice black bean loaf. Do you just use canned? Do you got to do you gotta like, mash them? And do mash them or what? Mm-hmm. Loaf? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do. I mean, <sighs> dry beans are just a fucking pain in the ass to prep. If you have a pressure cooker, like an Instapot, it's not so bad, but you can't really beat just canned beans. So, yeah, you just it, pretty much the same recipe, you know, add some sriracha, breadcrumbs, some seasoning, maybe crack one or two eggs in there. It'll kind of bind it together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm uh, yeah. every once in a while when I am craving that white, cr- like white trash sort of Americana type dinner where it's like I'll make that and some. Uh, you know, vegan mac and cheese and some uh, mashed potatoes. It's pretty good. Cron, you? Oh, it's one of my favorite things that my mom makes. She makes it every time I come home. That's great. It's fucking delicious. What about the artist, Milov? I think uh, I would do anything for love. It's like a solid fucking rock anthem, dude. Fuck yeah. This song's good as hell. Both Bad Out of Hell and Bad Out of Hell 2 are like stacked albums. I was listening to them after I watched this movie. I did uh, do some Meat Love Spotifying mm-hmm. as well. Uh, the same. That's <laughs> what we did while I All ate right. dinner today. Yeah. Did you, did you have Meat Love? No, we had uh, we had uh, chicken wraps. Chicken quesadilla, or no, chicken enchiladas. It's chicken, chicken, chick apostrophe in. At this point, Meatloaf walks in, and David starts in on him as soon as he gets in. Uh, with some more lame jokes, of course. Jack takes it pretty well. Uh, we meet Sylvia. She's a young lady sitting at the bar, and she accidentally accidentally spills a drink on Jack. He takes this pretty well as well. Uh, but he starts up a conversation with her and asks if the comic is here, is her type of comedy. Well, I did come in here for a drink, but normally I take mine in a glass. I think it's his line. It's like a joke you would hear at Branson, Missouri or something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) His entire vibe is Branson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Yeah. Even the murder parts. Oh, for sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. That's so Branson. I mean, it's I mean, it, it, it is biblical murder, right? He's trying to salvage. We don't, I don't, we'll get there. Okay. (laughs) I might be still confused. Uh, David starts <laughs> singing his lame ass songs about oh, truckers. Yeah, I love that he's like, Does anybody in the audience have a suggestion? <laughs> and some guy's like, Truckers. He's like, All right, we're sticking with the same shit we've done the whole set. Yes. <laughs> he's lucky nobody yelled out puppets. That would have mm-hmm. been frustrating. 9 11. Do you guys That's get, not till next year. Do you guys wake up at night screaming puppets like me? No. Oh, not okay. At all. all right, never mind then. <laughs> Bones, don't look at the Discord. Um, Jack continues his chat with Sylvia, but Jack quickly realizes that this song is about him. Uh, some of the lyrics here from David are 18 wills and a real short spoke. Uh, the crowd's loving it. Uh, Jack, he seems a little annoyed at this point, uh, but he plays along with it. There's a cute blonde in the crowd. She's uh, she's digging what David's doing. She is picking up what he is putting down, as we say. Uh, as Jack walks out, he gives David a long glance, and David kind of notices this, but Charlie, the cute blonde... Walks up to David and starts kind of hitting on him, but David kind of points in Sylvia's direction and says, I think he says he's married. 
But uh, the bar owner stops him before he can get to Sylvia and ask if he can do more nights. I think his funniest line comes with this interaction with the blonde when she's like, we are having like a little bit of a bridal party. And he says, yeah, it looks like about eight months too late because the bride's like super pregnant. I was like, that's the funniest thing he's fucking said. She's also pounding a beer. uh Uh-huh. It's black top, it's, baby. It's Canada, baby. Hey. <laughs> David informs Sylvia that he just got booked for a few more nights. Well, she's fucking pissed at this and storms off. She can't believe that he would want to stay here and do use or, or use his talents here. David chases after oh, her. There's I'll a great be- there's a great part here because I wrote down the dialogue. Uh, he's like next weekend three nights here she's like here you actually think we're gonna spend a whole week here it's like how long do you think a week is lady (laughs) well was she saying that it's the week to get to next weekend i thought it was like we'll go somewhere else and then come back for three nights but she considers that to be a week i don't know oh i i took it as he was saying, like, oh, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be here through the week, and then I'm going to perform. Oh, that could. Next weekend. That makes more sense. So maybe it was like a Tuesday night? I don't know. No way. I think, I think this, this is, this is this like is a hop Friday. Saturday. Yeah, this yeah. is a Friday or Saturday crowd, bro. And then they're going to have to stick around a blacktop for six more days before his next stint starts. Well, that's true. Oh, no, wait. Well, he, that's about the bus. Uh, they continue their argument. Uh, he says that he's doing his the best he can. Sylvia shares that she's kind of paying for all this. And she wants commitment from David and wants to have 2.5 kids with him as well. Whatever the fuck that means. Okay. I had a very I can, sick I can explain joke, this. But I can explain I this. I decided not to say it. The average family has 2.5 kids. How? Because some have three and some have two, and Thank it averages you, out to two and a half. Or you could have one and somebody could have four, or, you know. It's just like the national average. Yeah. It's a it's a jokey way of, of referencing, like, what is normal and average. Or she wants to have a fucking Siamese baby and lose one of them in an operation, uh, you know, where they like their brains are fused, you know, and they got to do that thing of like, we're going to try to save them, but one of them might die because it's it's got 60 percent of the brain, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, but the other one didn't die. He lives like, in this basket. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I've seen that movie. Two kids and just a fucking pair of legs walking around. <laughs> 2.5. Leave our brother alone. Stop picking on him. Quit picking him up. <laughs> Stop making him run off cliffs. No, he's not Forrest's brother. Hey, hey, David. hey. David can't say he loves her. I mean, she's a pretty good-looking lady. I, well, I think, if she was paying for my comedy career, I think I'd she, be like, she's definitely the fuck out of you, baby. I think she's the hottest of the Sex and the City girls. I, I will agree. Her, 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 I mean, I agree. Her face you heard that here. Yeah, yeah. I think the whole thing, though, is she's like, can we stop doing this? And he's like, this oh, is shit, how- I thought you were really going to go into like sex in the city detail. No, I don't mm-hmm. know. I think the one chick is the hottest, but I don't know anything about it besides that. <laughs> okay. Damn it. I think the whole thing though is she's like, we should get off the road. And like, he's kind of like, that's how I make money. She's like, no, I want a family and stuff. And he's like, Oh, and we're just supposed to live off your money. <laughs> it's like, it sounds like a pretty all right deal, dude. That's what I'm saying. I love you, baby. Stop doing this fucking truck stop comedy for the rest of your life and be a stay at home fucking sex object. I mean, now that I think about it, that's kind of like this what I do with this podcast. 
from the comfort of your basement? Yeah. Once a week? <laughs> Go have fun with your friends. She storms off. David can't say that she, that he loves her, though. That, that, uh, there's some truth to that joke. <laughs> Our pal Jack, he was listening to this the whole time from his big rig. Sylvia locks David out of their terrible motel room, uh, so he decides to sleep in his hunk of shit car. Get a load of Brewster's millions over here, fucking staying at the Ritz and fucking shit. Fucking judging people's accommodations. <laughs> Look like a trailer that they put walls in between, dude. That Dude, yeah, that is the four seasons of fucking Blacktop, dude. <laughs> No wonder she wants to fucking leave. I don't blame her. Neither uh, are to blame. That's the whole point of this whole thing. Neither neither <laughs> of them are wrong. Neither of them are correct. They uh, we just we just wanted to be together. Yeah. Well, no, they should split up. But <laughs> well, also one should be booked for murder eventually. But <laughs> well, he should uh, just yeah, he should have just <laughs> gone with her. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's kind of into it. Yeah. Yeah. Where's I, your farm at? <laughs> yeah. I think there's even a part where that chick is like, she talks to you that way? <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Jack. He's making a balloon animal, and he sneaks into Sylvia's motel room and watches her sleep. She awakens quickly, only to find a balloon bunny sitting in the chair. She thinks David did it. She looks out and kind of gives him a sweet look. Man, it's it's so easy to believe that Meatloaf is capable of sneaking quietly into a hotel room. Those boots. Yeah, you want to hear the that sw- belt buckle, the swish of his thighs rubbing together. <laughs> and those Wranglers. Being out of breath, having to slowly open the doorknob, like. The the next morning, David is startled awake by so the David big fell asleep corn. in the car. Yeah, he slept in this car. Okay. Do you think he had the dashboard light on? Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah! I don't get it. Don't worry about it. It's off a bat out of hell. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's a well, he's, good he's blowing he's blowing me off. It's a good one. I just wanted you to explain it to the listener. No, man. They got to they got to fucking Spotify bat out of hell themselves. Just <laughs> belt that shit out while they're fucking making a black bean meatloaf. If you're making love to a nice, love have a to nice your lady. Date night with your wife. Make a black bean meatloaf. Listen to Bat Out of Hell. Get it on. Then Get it on. Then when your wife takes a shower to wash off the sin, you go play Resident Evil 4 and listen to Five Day Rentals. That's a fucking weekend, baby. That's a fucking good weekend right there. I mean, true question. I think you had fun in Memorial Day weekend? That's better than Memorial Day weekend. Just true question. If you if you listening are not already intimately familiar with Bad Out of Hell, why are you even listening to this podcast? I mean, who are you and what do you want from us? Yeah. I'll tell you right now. My mother will listen to this episode because it has Bad Out of Hell in it. It's the only one. She says we cuss too much. Your parents have actually listened to the show or attempted to? When you go to my house on my old bedroom, there's a five-day rental sticker on the door. Because there's a hole in the door and that's what they put over it. (laughs) But yes, they did say they listened while driving to Springfield or something. I don't remember. And they were like, yeah, we heard about 17 F words in the first like 10 minutes. I was Sorry. Like, no. no. I was like, My, maybe 10. <laughs> so yeah, they didn't make it through a whole episode. I don't, I don't think they ever would. But your parents haven't listened to this, Kron? No. No, mine don't know this exists. Let's keep it that oh. way. I just had to put something in the mailbox. Pipe bomb. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, like, no, Dan, please, a pipe bomb. Crod would rather you blow up <laughs> his parents' fucking mailbox than to tell him about a five day riddle sticker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, something happened to your dad at the mailbox. Oh, fuck. It blew up. There's a bunch of oh, powder all over the flag. <laughs> Don't oh, worry. I mean, is that, is don't, that okay? Don't worry, Mom. We're about to get a fat payday off this. <laughs> I know who did it. <laughs> Sylvia is at the diner having breakfast. <laughs> she asked for a... What, what is a low-calorie... Lo- low-fat muffin. <laughs> and what the, <laughs> the waitress reacts as though she... Can't... That is not even English. Had, had not ever even heard those words much less in that order well i mean she does work at a truck stop diner so i imagine triple the bacon is probably a regular occurrence there yeah i do like that she like brings over a fucking bear claw that's the size of a plate (laughs) she's like this is the closest thing we got it's covered in powdered sugar Mm -hmm. (laughs) They've got so many fucking donuts at this truck stop because they won a contest and they chose the $90,000 worth of donuts. <laughs> They're like, that's the smarter investment for our truck stop. They can't get through these fucking things. You sell them at 30 cents a pop. You think... <laughs> oh, never mind. I was going to try to connect it to a guy that used to sit at Bell's is now up there at that diner in Blacktop. All right. She runs into Jack again and almost spills her coffee on him. He has a box full of items that he's apparently taken to a kid's camp. Uh, Our waitress here says he's a great guy and don't ever suspect that he would do anything wrong. Sylvia asks Jack when the bus runs through. I think she says once a year. Jack, like, takes a bunch of donations up to the orphans at that camp. Do they live there year-round? We don't know what kind she of She says it, is it to the obvious <laughs> tourists as though Sylvia is familiar with the boys' camp. Like, mm-hmm. just up, up that way. We need Wait. something to make him look like a decent man. Is it, And a funny thing with this, too, is, like, uh, you you see it unfold as it continues Sylvia with Jack, but the waitress is like kind of into Jack too. They, I kind of got that vibe. Too, yeah, man. I think it's his confidence, man. I mean, he's just a joyous guy, you know. It's probably his ability to write and sing amazing songs. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sylvia asks Jack when the bus runs through, he gives her a day and says six days in blacktop, or gives her the day and she says six days in blacktop. Jack turns around and says, and it'll be the longest six days of your life and walks out. Uh, But as Jack is leaving, David comes through the door and Jack says, try some commitment as David walks past. And he kind of gives him a weird look. A uh, cup of coffee and the commitment. <laughs> Wall outside. Low fat commitment, please. <laughs> if you have it. Never never heard of it. Decaf, get the fuck out of here. Oh, doesn't the waitress tell Sylvia, Sylvia to get her own coffee, too? Yeah. She's like, help yourself. It's behind the bar. Mm-hmm. No. Like, is that just a standard thing? Like, everybody just gets their own damn coffee, or... I think they're just trying to get her to work there. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Maybe she was trying to save her life. Pick up a few shifts. You're going to be sitting here for fucking eight days. If you could bust table two, that'd really help us out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one working here. I'll bring you another one of these low fat, in quotation, muffins if you uh, yeah wash some dishes. <laughs> hey, if I pour it, I'm not paying. That's how it goes. Jack locks David's cell phone. And if, it, if, a, if a good-looking executive guy comes in here bitching about where his wife is, 
the rule is nobody says anything. Mm-hmm. Even Sent if you know, restroom. you don't say anything. <laughs> yeah, if you saw her earlier, just to look the other way. Distract him with the local whore. Jack locks David's cell phone uh, as David tries to patch things up with Sylvia. Uh, but he would rather do comedy than commit. Sylvia takes off again. Did you David guys makes- notice the uh, anticlimactic mug knockover? Yes. That falls onto the rug that it makes it a, a noise as loud as. And I don't even know if that was audible on the podcast because it's so inaudible in slow motion. But for some reason, everybody in the diner turns as though it was the loudest crash ever. Why? Why is the truck stop diner carpeted? I don't know. <laughs> that seems like a terrible it, decision. It it loses some of the effect when it doesn't shatter. Like it just falls. And they do it again later with a plastic bottle. Mm-hmm. Hey, TJ, this yeah. is where we're going to film this. What's that? That's a trailer. Oh, we'll turn it into a diner, man. Oh, and put the other half as the help motel. Yeah. 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 All right. David makes a little scene here. Uh, Jack's pulling out. Uh, Sylvia's kind of running out the, the diner here. She, she asked... Uh, she has to snag a ride with Jack. Uh, Jack reaches up and, or as she's getting into the truck, Jack reaches up and tosses a Polaroid picture out the window towards David. Uh, they take off. David tries to chase him down, but he can't find his keys. He also picks up this Polaroid picture as well. Uh, he calls AAA and notices a shit ton of missing posters for girls. Uh, some greasy ass dudes, they show up to fix his ride. Uh, we cut to Jack and Sylvia. They're building a nice little relationship here. He introduces Goliath to her. That's his big rig. And, uh, he never lets me down. Jack goes into relationship with, uh, with his big rig and some lessons on committing. And he just doesn't. Or it works if folks don't get hurt. Just some stupid fucking shit that Jack says. He always he has some. He's got very, his folky lexicon yeah, that he uses. Like yeah, old people advice kind of type of shit. Mm-hmm. Did it? Was it weird to you guys that he refers like that? He, it's named Goliath, but he refers to it like as a as a like in the masculine. Like, don't we normally refer to, like, ships and, and vehicles as she? Like, I call my car baby, right? But it's, it's like, I put a feminine emphasis on it whenever I tell my wife I'm going to go wash baby or I'm going to go move baby out of the street. Like, that. Yeah, but that's just because you've no? never had a vehicle big enough for the masculine. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have a, a truck. You don't yeah. have a big rig or a tank. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe that changes it. <laughs> like, no, I say Janet. But that's why I call. Like, that's why I call her baby because she is. She's the smallest, but like most feisty of of the vehicles I've had. All the other ones have been big, beefy ones. Do they have big, beefy? Like, ones? I don't. I don't call. I don't. I don't have a name for my truck, but like it's. You know, it's the truck. <laughs> Is that how Babe, you move your it? fucking Hyundai. I want to take the truck. You know? Yes. I'm going to go wash the truck. No, I don't wash the fucking truck. That's what it rains for, baby. You I'm keep get- the blood on the blade, you understand? Uh, When AAA shows up, the sheriff also shows up. And he tells the sheriff that uh, his girl was kidnapped. Oh, the sheriff doesn't work for AAA. Like he's not. I thought it was like a one of those double dip deal package Deadwood mm-hmm. situations. You know where I'm also a dentist. 
Nate Tupel. Sheriff just kind of blows over this. Uh, I mean, did I say like, Deadpool? I meant Deadwood. If I said Deadpool, you said Deadwood. Okay. Half sheriff, half triple A seems to be like a good, you know, the Venn diagram would overlap at some point. So yeah, that's pr- you probably cut down on paperwork. Mm-hmm. I only got to write down the Venn once. Yeah, I could copy and paste this when I get back <laughs> to the office. Well, Dean. You got a flat tire, and you're drunk, so man, I can help you out with this. Pick your poison. Yeah, Sheriff blows over this. He pretty much just says it's a fight between lovers. Uh, David asks about the picture of the girl. Sheriff tells him that she was hacked up with a chainsaw after, the, after she was frozen to death and spread all over the place. You two weren't uh, arguing over a donut promotion by any chance, were you? <laughs> I was just going to say, like, that. that's kind of the cop's deal and in, in breakdown as well. Like, he's just chalking it up to, you know, you guys had a fight and your wife took off. Well, yeah. I mean, I've just found a better version of breakdown here. Okay. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> not crazy. You it just is need a, to commit, Kron. I, I don't want this to sound like, oh, it's fucking tough to be a dude or whatever. But statistically speaking, uh, right, like most most murders and assaults on, like within couples, right, the assailant is normally involved, right, with said person, right? Like most murders Yeah, yeah you're, happen. Like, you're suspect number one if your significant other goes missing. Yes, exactly. So... I wonder how many people have like legit like shit my wife's missing and their first thought is like fuck they're gonna think I did it you know like what that's had to have happened right yeah I'm sure oh, fuck you know <laughs> well that's it's the price of uh, running the world as long as we did so I but I do gotta, guess I guess for every one of those that legitimately happens there are 9999 where it's like hey you also googled like how much does formaldehyde cost or yeah. you know like <laughs> those are all the other cases that occur and a a minuscule fraction of that one is a guy who just like me and my wife were watching a movie and it was a, a we wondered, like, I wonder how much formaldehyde actually costs. So I Googled it, and then the next day she fell down the stairs. Like, it's just, it just happens. Like, <laughs> wasn't there one called the stairs? <laughs> was that the staircase where the dude, where it was like the owl? Yeah. That and they've like gone the back, and, or is that a different one? Yeah, that they think. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know where we've ended up on that. I think we watched it on a Netflix disc, actually. Yeah. I think Didn't we come back around now and we think, like, Adnan actually did kill, what's her name? I don't know. From Serial? No. I never finished it. I think they, like, like five episodes in and I was like, I don't care about this anymore. Didn't they let him out at one point and then he- I thought so. And then he, they pulled him back <laughs> in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking got They got- oh, you, Yeah, you got me. Uh, Jack and Sylvia, they stop at a fuel station. Congratulations, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro for your, uh, (laughs) for your sperm that still works. (laughs) Can't hear cancer. Mazel tov. Goddamn, we can still get dicks up. (laughs) I hope they, I hope they both take their babies to like a diner and they're like, hey, doesn't this remind you of that, that movie we did? Like, yeah. What are you talking about, Dad? <laughs> you know in real life they're not they won't even know those kids' names. <laughs> He's eighty three, dude. He can't even hold a baby. <laughs> yeah. They'll just give the baby one thousand dollars thinking that'll do something. Oh, well, that's great that his girlfriend will like, you know, she'll be changing diapers at the same time. Like it'll be mm-hmm. really efficient. Yeah. You just lay the baby on Al's chest and you just do one big wipe. 
Jack and Sylvia, they stop at a, another fill station. They agree to part ways. You got dookie wants. all over my hoo <laughs> But he wants to take a picture for his diary. Women never trust a man who has a diary. Yeah, also, if a trucker ever wants to take a photo of you, he's 100% going to crank it off later to that photo, so. Or kill you. Uh, we got to David. He finally gets back on the road and takes off after his woman. What if he showed her the diary? What if he opened up a book and like had all these happy women and was like, these are all the people that I've seen. Blah, blah, blah. Like, Still you- red flag. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Kron, what are you doing? Yeah, that'd be weird as hell. <laughs> okay. Sylvia takes a seat at the local drinking hole here at the new fill station. And, of course, the local boys can't contain themselves. One asks for a tune-up. They harass her pretty good with a pool stick. Uh, One of these guys, it looks like they got his fake teeth out of, like, the 50-cent machine at the grocery store. Like, they are perfect, like, Billy Bob teeth. We like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, she gets uh, knocks the pool stick into one of the guys here, knocks him down. And just as all this is happening, the all the other local rapists join in. And But Jack bursts in the door. Jack tells the boys to let the lady get all cleaned up. Jack goes a little Looney Tunes here on one of these guys and cuts his ear off. Can you hear me now? And then he tosses it into a beer. We did it. We got Verizon. (laughs) They're paying us $630. I mean, pretty pretty hardcore for Jack. Mm Mm-hmm. It's our first little taste of uh, his true psycho. Uh, Sylvia shows up and they leave. We cut back to David. He's speeding through the Canadian back roads to try to find his woman. Meanwhile, Jack makes a pit stop to show off uh, his poetry skills and to spray paint a message on the road that says David with an arrow so he knows which way they're going. And the road trip continues. So David's going after Goliath. (gasps) What? Whoa, oh, dude. Just blew your fucking mind, huh? Start the movie <sighs> over, dude. Dude, let me go back. Jack stops. This uh, is just sm- this is just like mother, dude. <laughs> Jack stops to smell the pines, and Sylvia says all she can smell is the bar. Jack tells her to take the water bottle back there and take a bath. I, how did she infer fucking take a bird bath from him saying I I I think he it well, that was she, later on. I think she's like I only smell the truck stop and then he says like hey there's a bottle of water back there like I'll get out and turn the other way. Okay. I it just seemed odd. Even on the second watch, I didn't. There, it was like missing a sentence of like, if you, hey, if you want to wash off or something. But yeah, she should have. I had guess a line now of, we would have baby wipes. She she should have had a line of like, these I'm are the ones wipe. that Al Pacino's girlfriend uses. <laughs> this is 2000. We had baby wipes. This is not looking Not like up in Canada. <laughs> This movie, you could tell me, yeah, this happened in like 1990. This was filmed in 92, and I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say earlier, Kron? Oh, there just should have been a line where she was like, I want to wash the stink of the place off me or something. Like, that yeah. would have filled the gap of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cut to David. He's doing some ridiculous gas to miles mathematics here. Just stop for gas, dumbass. Like. You've driven by a gas station. I'm 100% sure. He can't be uh, spending all of his comedy cash, though. I mean, he just, <laughs> got, he just got paid. Sylvia's gone, dude. He doesn't have any money. Yeah. That's why he's trying to well, catch Well, his up. wallet's in her coat, right? Yeah. That is a detail uh, we should have covered as well. I got you, bro. 
Sylvia takes a bath with the water in front of the truck, and Jack, of course, watches. Eh. Meanwhile, David finds well, the he's message so on the silent. road. He's able to just walk around that gravel. <laughs> he's talking to her as well. I don't know how she wouldn't notice how close he was. David finds the message on the road. It just says David. It has an arrow. And so he continues down. Cut back to Jack. He looks through some of Sylvia's things while she cleans up. And this is where she or he finds David's wallet. These woods can kiss you or kill you. It depends on who you come across. There's a lot of predators in these woods. So just think about the bunnies. And then he starts talking about isolation is... <laughs> invigorating for him you guys ever uh, make out with the woods what i don't kiss and tell <laughs> but let's just say yes i have let's just say making out takes too long oh yeah we've heard we've heard how dan doesn't like to kiss or any of that foreplay nonsense he's there to do a job i think was what he said. You clock in, you clock out. Uh, back to David. He finds another clue alongside the road. It's a note from Jack. It's the picture of that he took of Sylvia earlier. Uh, the note also says that he's learning. And there's also some gas cans for David as well. So we can continue on this fucking road trip. Back with Sylvia and Jack. Watch the language, bro. Your mom's listening. <laughs> Not anymore. We're an hour in. She We're didn't good. make it through the cold open. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody will. <laughs> Back with Sylvia and Jack. They keep trucking along. Jack shows off his uh, state capital knowledge here. She asks him the capital of Alaska, and he answers it's Juno, and lets her in on the fact that that's where he's from, but he'd never call it home. Oh, wait. Come on. She also asks him <laughs> California. He says Sacramento, and then they both laugh for no reason at all. <laughs> it's insanity. Why this is, is the why is it funny? This is the clip that Kron sent both of us the other night. Yeah. <laughs> Sacramento. Ha ha ha. Maybe has any of us ever been to Sacramento? No. I mean, that's where the Deftones are from. I mean, can't be that bad, right? It sounds funny as hell. <laughs> uh, Jack almost plows into the back of a truck. He stops to get out and check. Uh, we cut back to David. He's pulling up to the truck. Jack gets out and investigates. And uh, Sylvia says, I thought there was nobody on this road. So did I. Who the so David fuck's pulls out up. on my fucking kidnapping road? <laughs> David pulls up. There's a person in the back of the cab of the truck with a sign that says David on it. Uh, he goes up to investigate, and it's the blonde Charlie from the bar from the other night. He startles her pretty good. Straight up, bro. I thought they were dead. Yeah. Fucking movie got me, bro. Like I fucking it's like, shit, dude. <laughs> Point five, dude. Saying twist and turns, I mean, just when I think I got blacktop figured out. You don't. She says the guy in the big rig said that he would give her a ride. Uh, David says that that dude has my, or kidnapped my girlfriend. So they decide to join forces and take off. Uh, David spills all the beans about Jack and how he thinks he's murdered girls. Uh, Where'd you lose your beans? <laughs> Spill the beans, boy. What? How long have we been on what? this rock? Uh, they come up on Jack's big rig. Uh, Jack put Jack sees this and puts on a tape and teaches Sylvia how to drive the big rig. That's David tries to. Uh, well, I don't know what he's trying. Is he trying to s s swipe him off the road? Yeah. Like, I guess but maybe all of he's trying to just like drive up and yell to Sylvia like, "Hey, this guy's gonna kill you!" Yeah, or something. He he just does not want Sylvia to see that Dave's there. But I think it's it's a good front. I thought it, it was kind of a smart move. 
right? To like have her control the wheel so the swipes make sense and everything. I'd... Well, he even turns up the music more once they get closer and stuff. Yeah. Which is a nice little detail. Uh, so, yeah, he tries to pull up, but uh, Jack keeps swerving the wheel back and forth, knocking David's car into David's car and the road f- fucking guards and shit. Wouldn't it Jack be uh, cool if he put in Bat Out of Hell? He was like, I love this. I love this one. I thought about that on the my first watch. I was like, damn. They missed, they missed such an opportunity. But then he was like, I'm not going to get paid, so why... Would I do that? Nah, nah. He's a businessman. Mm-hmm. Well, he's Marvin. probably he's probably like my music cost this much, and they were like, "That's more than the entire budget." <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but no thanks, Marvin. Jack also gives Sylvia a brake line lesson as well. Hmm. David tries multiple times to get ahead of Jack, but he just can't do it. And he finally spins out, and Jack speeds off. David and Charlie are a little bit freaked out here. David's bumper is just so messed up. They're very upset about that. (laughs) It's like a little piece hanging off. They push the car out of the ditch. Charlie wants to call her family, but... uh, Cell phone's locked. Oh, yeah. He tells her that that psycho locked my phone. Charlie finds a map and shows David all the roads that the guys take because if he reaches the turnpike, she says that he's gone and you won't be able to find him. And you could pretty much kiss Sylvia a goodbye. Uh, we cut to Jack. He's cooking lunch in the back of his big rig. Got a whole kitchen set up in there. Yeah, it's a real uh, the boat from Thunder in Paradise kind of. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a living quarters, a kitchen, a workshop, meat storage. Yeah, freezer. I, what? I didn't quite grasp, like, what is he supposed to be hauling than normally? Um, well, I guess he's he frozen meats. meats. Okay. Yeah, he's got but, like a little compartment for meats, but that's like one eighth of the truck. But is that personal use meats or is that. Yeah. I'm hauling. Is he a, a Schwann guy? Like, is he. Giraffe to Nova Scotia. <laughs> Uh, Yeah, Sylvia to get some cinnamon sticks from the freezer. So she walks back. We get some tension here, which we think maybe he's going to lock her in the the meat locker there. He approaches her and scares her. uh, And then he tells her about some of the meat in the freezer and closes the door. And as we do that, the camera pans over to a dead person's face. Whoa, shit. Oh, I think he has a line here, too, when she's checking out the meat, where he's like, yeah, it's pretty cold back here. That's why we set up front. But it's also like, well, you can't fucking drive the big rig from the trailer, you dumbass. Back with David. He continues to chase down Jack. Charlie plays some guitar and tells her... Or tells him her story and how she's a local girl just looking for love in all the wrong places. But David says he's committed to Sylvia and he just doesn't want to be tied down with all that real life shit, dude. I don't want to take out the fucking trash and fucking leave my peanut butter covered knives in the sink. Yelled at. I get I it. I do that shit. I get it. Fuck that shit, bro. I want to fucking do comedy at fucking truck stops about truckers. Truckers need entertainment too, bro. Truckers run America. Absolutely Thank you, truckers. Right. We salute and you. Canada. We salute you. Unless you're in the passing lane going 71 miles an hour. <laughs> Kron, every time we travel with him, he just does the the horn. Hey, still fun. It is, I will say. I would cut back to Jack and Sylvia. They're having a meal, and she reveals how sweet David was back in the day. He was broke, but he tried hard. Like, what the fuck? As she's telling all these lame-ass things that he was doing, Jack notices David getting closer. 
he goes and loads up his rifle as she's talking. Oh, wait. And shoots out David's tire. She does tell a story about how, like, when they were first dating and they were poor, she's like, he made a construction paper flowers with pipe cleaner stems. And it's like, oh, what is the dude, five and a half? I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Stole them from even, the daycare. <laughs> even at my brokest, I never had those fucking <laughs> art supplies lying around. Like, uh, it, would have been cheaper to just get flowers. Yeah, or just go to a park and pick real flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Have you guys ever bought pipe cleaners? No. I've never me neither. in my adult life bought pipe cleaners <laughs> no. nor construction paper for any reason. <laughs> I mean, I've bought construction paper for the kids, but... Oh, wait. You know what? I did smoke uh, tobacco out of a pipe for a while, so I did buy pipe cleaners. <laughs> But like the pink ones and the fucking green ones. No, yeah, not the fuzzy long ones. You brought a you bought an actual like metal one that had like they a had pipe a, cleaner thing on the end, right? You didn't was, buy the. It was like a. <laughs> it had like the red. <laughs> well, but it does have like a fuzzy part on the outside because it's like that's what you push through the yeah. the pipe. But, it, okay, but it these was, are all fuzzy. Was yours just on the end, or was it the? It looked like a straw. Basically. No, it's like it's like all the way down fuzzy, but it's like they're not weird colors. They're just like white. You know what I mean? But they're sold as like okay. legit pipe cleaner. Dan, where do you buy your children's school supplies at? Just like Walmart, Target? Target and shit. I okay. Guess. Have you ever bought school supplies at a grocery store? Um... I mean, if the kid says something like, oh, my crowns are broken or some shit. And okay. Then that's it's like okay. that time of year. So that explains why that section is there. My whole life, the weird school supply section at grocery stores has weirded me out. I don't know what it is. For the longest time, I would also, I would send you guys like photos of the toy section of my local yeah. grocer. And the reason I'm there is because I'm like, I'm hesitating because I'm nervous to walk further by the school supply section. And I don't know what it is. And I think it's because all it, it screams panic I mean, vibe. It, no, it screams panic by. It screams like, oh, shit, I have a school project due tomorrow. And I, I, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a weird little hang up. It's like, I, it's like a tall office building at midnight. And there's like one light on. Fucking weirds me out. Who's up there? What's it's going? A guy You're not supposed to be to do in his there. art project. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's that's another weird thing I have. That like, what what is that? Uh, I mean, when it's time to buy school supplies, I'm not like, all right, let's go down to the local grocery store. Yeah, right yeah. Now. I could see them having like some crayons and a pen. Like that's all you need. But they they got they got hole punches and construction paper and all sorts of shit. Pipe cleaner. What is that? You are an extremely detailed shopper. Yeah, you don't have to go down every aisle. <laughs> what? Yeah, you do. It's also when, right, but it's across from the cold brew. Just going in for almond milk, dude. Like shit. Yeah, almond milk's that's that's two things over. That's two fucking freezer things over. His wife's like, How'd you spend two thousand dollars at the grocery store? <laughs> don't ask. Buying, out and bought, buying vegan mayonnaise, dude. Shit's like eleven dollars a jar. Blacked out and bought every school supply. Oh, I did buy. I did buy. Um, I was <laughs> looking at pro color pencils protein bars <laughs> today. I was looking to see if they had the first form uh, ones that I really dig, but they have Snickers protein bars now. Four grams of sugar and twenty grams of protein. I was like, Fuck that! I cleaned them out. Hell yeah. <laughs> They could just make a Reese's Fast Break protein bar. Did God you just damn. buy several Snickers bars and you're calling them <laughs> protein? No, I'll bring one up after the break and show it to you. He's like, I'll bring one up. And I'll eat it. I'll eat it on the podcast and and I'll tell you if it's. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna rip a Doughboys thing, but mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's low class. Let's not do that. Snack or whack? That's a yeah, snack or whack. That's an actual good podcast. Let's not fucking ruin them. I didn't listen to Black top. the new one yet. 
All right. Uh, uh, fuck, where are we at? Jack notices David getting closer as Sylvie is telling all these lame-ass stories about David. Um, he loads up his rifle and straight up shoots out David's tire and then straight up shoots fucking Charlie. Dude, just like that stone-cold fucking killer this guy is. Sylvia's freaking the fuck out. Jack shows Sylvia he didn't kill David and starts in on his true intentions and that's for David and Sylvia to be committed to each other. Sylvia manages to pull the gun away from Jack and turn it on him. But Jack says, you really think I would give you a loaded gun? And he pulls it away from her and turns it around and shoots another round. See, you even doubt yourself. Sylvia screams for David as Jack uh, brings her to the cab of the truck to zip tie her to the cab. Why wouldn't David you, comes. Why wouldn't you just try the gun? Like, what do you have to lose at that point? He said it wasn't loaded. Yeah. He's a smart but, man. Yeah, but there's a chance it is, and he's just saying that. You're going to be in the same spot either way if it's not. Uh, also, so you're I mean, pulling she, the trigger? She, she's not a murderer, so she's second-guessing. You know, she's probably doing that calculus in her head. I mean, later down the road, she's going to be like, fuck, I should have pulled that trigger. Yeah. <laughs> David comes running up the hill towards Jack. He's also wearing orange pants. <laughs> yeah. No. Jack kicks David in the fucking head and they he need, falls down the they hill. They need him to stand out against the fucking dreary... Canadian woods. Fucking hole that they dug for him to <laughs> run up. The also, quarry that they shot in. Also, I'm going to go change real quick. <laughs> Jack says, uh, I feel like a fucking idiot. <laughs> you got a lot of work to do. Jack fucking throws the rifle down to David and says, take your best shot. Uh, David shoots and of course misses. Jack warns David that he needs to stay he needs to stop him before he gets to the turnpike. That to had to make he loves Milo her. feel pretty good. That he missed? Yeah, he felt, he felt in that moment he felt Oh, he knew it. He felt thin. <laughs> I don't even have to duck. Uh Jack warns David that if he doesn't stop him before he gets to the turnpike, uh to prove his love to her that she's gone. And Jack takes off. Uh, and David heads back to the car, and we're headed to the bathroom because it's time to drain our oil. Welcome back, everybody, to Five Day Rentals. We are smack dab in the middle here of Blacktop from the year 2000. We have Meatloaf running around. As a uh, very nice psychopath. Um, Kron enjoys meat loaf. Mm -hmm. Bones enjoys the bean loaf. So we yeah, established and, that. And none of us are wearing stupid orange pants anymore. So yeah, Kron did take off his orange pants. Mm -hmm. Kron, do you really have orange pants? No, I don't have orange okay. pants. Bones? No. I, you've seen my wardrobe. It's all shades of gray. 50. Black or gray. 50 shades of gray. Did you... Have you seen that movie? I've lived no. it. <laughs> it's a fucking biopic, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm that guy. Is it? Have you watched it? Uh, yeah, I've seen the first two. Uh, never finished the trilogy. You know what they say? Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. Gosh, this guy's a fucking hit machine, dude. I'm feeling I think... pretty. I'm feeling pretty good today, man. I think uh, something bad's probably due to happen this weekend. <laughs> Well, meatloaf's already passed, so yeah. Oh, bummer. All he, right, went a, he was a little Trumpy anti vaxxy sort of towards the end, wasn't he? Yeah, let's not yeah. let's not remember that like, part of his life. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's celebrate all the stuff that happened before the 
He did die in Nashville. You didn't ever run into him, Cron? Mm-mm. Oh, that must have made him feel so thin that he never ran into you. He's fucking, he's so quiet <laughs> moving throughout the city. I mean, you'd never, Raga. he could sneak up on you, you'd never know it. We're all going to wake up tomorrow and there'd be a balloon animal in our house. <laughs> oh, that'd be so sweet. Yeah, you're a pretty good clown, but you're no meatloaf. All right, David gets a visitor on a horse. I don't know why my brain connected it as like, I'd love to see uh, Meatloaf as clown in Slipknot. <laughs> I mean, he could have been. Yeah. yeah maybe, oh, fuck. Maybe, maybe he, he was. was the whole time, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? I love what you guys are doing. I love you're from Iowa. I just uh, love smacking these beer kegs <laughs> with a baseball bat. I still got the baseball bat I used on blacktop. <laughs> David gets a visitor from a man on a horse. Why is this scene in the movie? You could cut this. It would Absolute. not change a thing. Kron, this went right back to my... Uh, I was going to bring this up later, but this had like lifetime vibes and at some points had Tales from the Crypt vibes. And so the second time I was watching, I was like, could you cut 30 minutes of this and it'd be a Tales from the Crypt? And this is absolutely a scene that I would cut. Like, you could tighten up the beginning, you could lose some of the stuff in the middle, and certainly this scene. Well, we'll get there. You could, if this was a Tales from the Crypt, like, you could cut this down to 30 minutes and then... At the end, like, Meatloaf kills somebody and turns to Cameron and says, like, love will kill ya. And that's, like, <laughs> that's all it would take. Yeah, you're right. I, for some reason, I was thinking they were hour longs, but they were just half hour. Mm-hmm. But didn't you get two? No, you just got one. Two what? This... This would be like a I special ep- two episodes. I I recall seeing them on HBO where they would do two back to back. It wouldn't okay, be two things why. in the same, but yeah. Maybe that's why I thought that. All right, he quickly David quickly moves Charlie's body to the trunk because David shot her earlier. Uh, the guy asks if, he, if he's in trouble. Uh, we learned that his name is Buck, and he is a retired sheriff that hunts coyotes. Buck says uh, he thought he heard gunfire. He clearly does not believe David. He says, my tire blew out. Uh, Buck can see the blood dripping from the trunk of the car. And he says he will go back to get a jack and help him with that oil that's leaking as well. Uh, David quickly changes his tire and takes off. The chase continues into the night. But he didn't have a jack. How did he do it? He did have a jack. He lied. To to a cop? He's retired. He's not a cop anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's how you. That's why you can lie to him. Okay. You always lie to the cops. You do. Yes. But anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. That's for the court to decide. I don't think until they tell you that. Oh shit! Good point. You haven't Miranded me. Mm-hmm. Don't tell him that either, though. Oh yeah. Because you don't want them to, they don't don't want them to know that you know your rights. Yeah, here's pisses the, them off. Just don't say shit to cops. That's Mm-mm. that's when the, the cop way to do knocks it. on your door. You step out of the out of your house and close your door behind you. No, yes. shut you shut the door and talk to them through the little mail slot. <laughs> you stick your little tongue out. Uh, uh, give me now, fuckers. Taste this shit. Uh, fucking pigs. Uh, anyway, my wife's in the back. She's the one bleeding out. Uh, <laughs> use the back door. Uh, anyway, yeah, I shot that fucking dude. Uh, statistically speaking, I'm the one that did it. Uh, I felt I was fearing for my life. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, your wife must be a happy lady. By the way, I Google all that stuff because we were watching a movie two nights ago. I was just wondering the price. (laughs) Dan, I don't want to blow over your your wife must have been a happy lady. 
Jack and Sylvia to stop at a local. She never gave it back, though. (laughs) You can't see it right now, but you should look what she's doing to the doorknob. I don't know. (laughs) Jack tells Sylvia that the motel clerk's life is on her hands if she does not behave while they're at this place. Gentlemen, the last time I checked, a big rig... I mean, hell, we've had a whole conversation for three episodes about the cabs of big rigs. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck would he get a ho- motel, hotel, whatever the fuck this is? Ho, he, He's got a fucking sleeper. Does he have a sleeper? They never, like, do they show the back of it? It Not looks really. like it has a sleeper. It's big enough where I would have, have assumed it had a sleeper. I'm, I'm guessing because of... Uh, what he does in said hotel room, like the peeping, the interview, excuse me. Okay. I guess it pushes our The rare yes. Bones burp on the podcast. Sorry, everybody. That was me. It wasn't Bones. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for add, it. add it to the burps and gaps episode. <laughs> I'm like a burp in Jesus. It's coming in June or July during our off period. <laughs> Jack leaves Sylvia in the room, ties her up, and heads out. Sylvia tries reaching for the phone in the room. Uh, She's got to take her shirt off to do this to help with it, apparently. Uh, Jack sets up some fake big rig lights to freak David out on the highway. (laughs) It works. He smashes right into him and spins out. And as soon as he stops, Jack calls him and says, There's a storm. (laughs) The storm is turning ugly. And you just stay put. He says, rest is what everybody needs right now, because tomorrow is going to be a big day. Uh, Back at the hotel, Sylvia finally gets the phone and calls David. But of course, Jack blocked his phone and it won't get through. Guys, what the fuck did she knock? Was it the lock from the door? Yeah, it's some kind of little lock mechanism that is on the ground. I'm not sure what it came from. Yeah, what is that from? I don't know, it looks th- like a drawer or something. The I thing mean, that like, she k- kind of sneakily picks up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't sure either. Because I thought it was a part of the old lady's glasses. When he does that later, right? Well, that's, he found that's how it. how he does with him. Like, that's what he does with the lock. Because he's like, hmm. this is what you get for breaking the rules or something. All right. I think it, yeah, it was a piece of a lock. Listener Discord challenge. If you paid more attention than we did, please let us know what this is. Blacktop is streaming on Tubi. All right. Uh, and, and on Redbox, apparently. Maybe we'll get lucky and have no ads. It's in HD. So. Yeah. <laughs> she calls Jack, but it's blocked, of course. And she's able to throw the phone back on to the table. As Jack comes beaming through the door with an immaculate platter of sandwiches. And boy, is he excited about this, just oh, like man. I am, gentlemen. I stole these it, from a bunch of uh, roadies. I started with a movie called Monster Dog, which had a very excited group of teens, and they were very excited about a platter of sandwiches. I've just been waiting so long to add another movie to that list. The way I think this does the trick. The way that he comes in with these two, he's like, well, but the way he describes them is like, you're never going to believe this, but this is like a salad that's made out of tuna. <laughs> and this one here, this is egg salad. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. And this this last one. Oh, we got a we got a ham and cheese over here. Ham and cheese. I think it's fun to mix and match. It's just like, <laughs> dude, what? Everybody's had these before. In twenty years, everyone's gonna eat like this, and they're gonna call it tapas and charge forty five dollars a plate, <laughs> and nobody will be satisfied. Sylvia, on the other hand, straight up does not give a shit about these sandwiches. I can see why. They're boring sandwiches. (laughs) Instead, she's like, why don't you just have sex with me already? And let's get this over with. 
This makes Jack very angry. I don't know why I said it like a caveman. This makes Jack very angry. Uh, he says, I could have already had you on your back if I wanted to. Uh, that's This is not what this is about. All about sex and no sandwich make Jack an angry <laughs> boy. <sighs> it's about two people trying to make it work. Uh, he lets her take a shower. Uh, she lets. He, he films her. Sylvia gives her a little herself a little pep talk before she gets in the shower that she can get her head right and make it through this. What was the conversation with her going into the production of this? Of hey, eighty percent of your screen time, you will be in a bra. Uh, I think they wanted. Like, I think they wanted the full. The full boob. I think so too, but it's not like it's a TV I, movie. I don't recall any cussing either. So yeah, Kron, I think this was truly I, a. You could clearly see. Yeah, but I think that's like the closest you can get away with, and still. Yeah, I mean, Friends on. was on the air for nine years, dude. Like, mm-hmm. oh. stop, Jennifer. Cold studio, dude. Dude. <laughs> Dan, oh. no, Dan, I'm in here. Get the, <laughs> get the Avino. You get you're getting it everywhere. I'm drowning in Avino. Help me! I put Avino in my eyes. Jennifer, go back. Upstairs. I moisturize everything except my nips. <laughs> Gotta keep them nice and dry. We, we've had this discussion. I yeah, built I think a whole career. It's so cold in the basement. Oh, it is. It is. Uh-huh. Go back upstairs. Baby. There's so much meat hanging from the wall. Oh. No, we're not talking about that. Gorsh. Oh. Back with David. He wraps up uh, burying Charlie's body out in the woods. Uh, he doesn't find Pinocchio. Gorsh. Oh, gorsh. <laughs> it's me, Jen. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston is a Milwaukee Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Milwaukee oh, Mickey go- Mouse. Oh, gorsh. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Took your dick back in. Uh, he leaves her hat on the shovel with his handprints all over it. Would you take the hat? I'd wear the hat for the rest of the movie <laughs> if I was Dave. Like, this chick really liked me. She mm-hmm. didn't make fun of me from my career or anything. Could have been happy. What could have been? Uh, we cut to Jack. He's could, could holding have at least a- changed out of his pants and put on her jeans or something (laughs) yeah i don't know she was wearing stupid orange pants though i know that much you got to switch up your look like psychologically you got to tell yourself it's a new day right Mm -hmm. i failed in those clothes i'm going to succeed in these clothes cops like who the fuck would wear orange pants you take the you take the test with the same pencil that you studied with that your mom bought you at the grocery store Last week, because that pencil knows all of the facts. Psychological. Folks, that's called a 360. We cut to Jack. He's holding a balloon dog. Uh, they sit down and he films mm-hmm. their conversation. Gorsh. He asks about her life story. She gives her favorite food, music, and so on. And it goes into secrets, and he wants to know all of her secrets. Jack wants to know what David doesn't. He asks what happened between her and David. That he didn't work at it. Then why? Or he asks why they didn't work it out. She digs uh, into his childhood. So what she's doing is, she says one for one. You so you ask me a question. I get to ask you a question. And he's like, oh, I've never played it this way, but I like it. So she starts to dig into his childhood in Juneau, Alaska. He only likes it for about three seconds. (laughs) Yeah. 
Uh, he says it was very isolated. So he wants another secret from her after she asks that. Uh, she says when she was 12, she got touched by Topper. Quid pro quo, Dr. Lecter. <laughs> Jack says that's a problem that she hasn't told David yet. So he thinks that this is why this is the root of their problems, I guess. Uh, they go back and forth about parents. She digs more into his family side. He finally reveals that his father was abusing his mother. Uh, he says, I don't like playing. I don't like you playing my game. Jack says, this is a test. And her and David are for her and David. When times get tough, they have to commit. Uh, he gets so worked up. He goes into how he killed his father by stabbing him and his whore. I did it for your, for my mother because she had no choice. He reveals this psycho Billy freaked out or psycho Billy freak out on his mom and she killed him, killed herself. So he went crazy and she fucking killed herself. Uh, Jack slaps Sylvia. Sylvia wakes up and Jack says, you're not learning anything new and shows her that uh, he killed the old lady at the motel. So it's kind they, of a, a breakdown slash psycho slash fight club kind of thing. No, Karan, this is uh, marriage counseling. Yeah, they, they do some interesting stuff with the edit here, too, where mm -hmm. they're doing like his reaction to what she just said, but he, like in the audio, they're playing his next question and it kind of jumps around. And then I don't know if you guys got seasick watching this fucking movie, but they, they just love to kind of coast in and out of those Dutch angles. And it is particularly rough on Kristen Davis's face in this. But I thought the, the audio choice with the edit was actually kind of, kind of good. It kept what could have been a boring scene a little bit. It gave it a little bit of spice. It's just a little, I don't know. It's like very hammy acting from Meatloaf of like, I did it for you, mommy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, uh, you know, trying to give this thing some juice, I guess. I, I think he's doing a good job with the material. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're like, the type of material that they're trying to do while maintaining a sort of TV appropriate rating yeah. sort of ties your hands a little bit or zip ties your hands to the cab of a fucking semi truck. But Zing. it's well, I guess it's kind of bad, but without meatloaf in this, this movie would be nearly unwatchable. I mean, 100 percent, 100 percent, because is it locked in licked in the other the guy who plays Dave. Yeah. Uh, that guy just must fucking audition really well. Because he's worked for fucking ever. But I think he's also Canadian. That's probably why he ends up in a lot of these productions. Um, Not is the it, strongest point yeah. in the movie. I think he's... Doesn't he play like the Dewey... Officer Dewey ripoff in Scary Movie? Yeah, he's got like and a little I, tiny dick or something. I think he's also uh, in Freddy vs. Jason, which I believe was a Canadian production. He's in a shitload. Wasn't he in American Pie and shit, too? I think maybe the later ones. Maybe. I know he went through like the R-rated comedies phase there. Yeah. Well, here, let me show you just his top or list off his, his top rated from sorted by popularity on Letterboxd. Scary Movie, White Chicks, Unforgiven. So Scary Movie and White Chicks have a higher pop popularity than Unforgiven. Tomorrowland, The Predator, Freddy vs. Jason, The Benchwarmers, Night at the Roxbury. It appears his most recent work was Spiral. Oh. I saw a story. Oh, no, it's a different spiral. Sorry. The same-sex oh. couple move to a small town so they can enjoy a better quality of life and raise their 16-year-old daughter, but nothing is as it seems. Yeah, so this is not a Saul story. Forgive me, but hey, the guy works, so. Sounds like my next I'm, pick. I'm doing a podcast. But, so. but suddenly their sins of the past are <laughs> brought back before them. 
David pulls up to the motel the next morning that Jack and Sylvia were at. Uh, he finds the dead motel clerk. There's a message in blood on the wall that reads, Dave, room seven. So he rushes there to find a note that tells him to hit play on a VCR. Um, a VCR is a video cassette recorder for our younger listeners. It's a tape you put in, you have to push play. So, yeah, I fucking uh, know. The video like, shows like Sylvia Aerosmith? in the shower. Yeah, that's that's the Aerosmith song, Just Push Play. Karan, you gotta add that one. You gotta add it. I'm not adding shit, dude. I'm not in charge of Spotify playlist. Uh, yeah, go check out the You're in charge of the, the Discord playlist, now. Joe. Spotify playlist and our TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. we're ass- we're assigning you tasks, buddy. Okay, we're we'll full of potential. We'll see if they get done. Uh, the video shows Sylvia in the shower that was filmed by Jack from the night before. It also shows her talking about how she was hurt by Topper. You got molested by Topper? My parents' basset hound? David says. Now David knows that uh, Sylvia was feeding Jack some bullshit. What a ridiculous line. It's pretty good. (laughs) He he takes off. We cut to Jack on some sort of uh, lookout tower waiting for David. Uh, he goes to make some lunch while Sylvia tries to find out or tries to get her way, find her way out of the zip tie. Jack pops up and just to check on her. We got a lot to learn before graduation day. He checks his zip tie, but Sylvia manages to get a curling iron and snag, get out with a curling iron and snag Jack's buck knife. That's uh next to or on the side of his seat there. You guys keep a knife on the side of your seat? No. I have a flashlight. I have a pipe bomb. <laughs> flashlight? I said, I'm not using my flashlight in traffic. So you do have a flashlight. Huh? Thank you for flashlight for sponsoring us this No, episode. man, that thing pulls just way too much power. If I plug that into the fucking... <laughs> cigarette lighter like little charger adapter to fucking run my battery down how many times I've I got the down? big one <laughs> all right David is closing in on Jack's big rig Sylvia gets out of the cab and head towards heads towards the trailer where Jack is cooking up lunch She sneaks up on him, stabs him in the back, and locks him in the freezer. Jack maybe should have just been a chef or something. I don't know if... He seems to like to cook. He's not cut out for this line of work. (laughs) Yeah. I thought it was a pretty good looking, like, him trying to take the knife out of his back. I thought that was pretty good. Very uh, shining moment here, though. I'm not gonna hurt you. Sylvia makes a quick call to David because she can see him closing in. Jack starts smashing the freezer unit in the meat locker. Uh, Sylvia takes off down the stairs of uh, the little lookout place. But she gets caught immediately because Jack's already made his way out. Jack gives her... Jack's been giving penalties through this whole thing. And uh, this is another one. He cuts off one of her fingers. Uh, he talks to David and says to stop all this, uh, to stop, or he will take the rest of her fingers. So David stops. Jack asks David if he's ready for the home stretch. Jack lets Sylvia talk to David. Sylvia says that she loves him, but he just needs to go. Like, forget this. Jack freaks out because they say they love each other. Look at that. And Jack goes into... His if I make it to the turnpike bullshit, you're never gonna see her again. And you have to stop me. And he says, I'm not giving out any more penalties for now on. Jack cuts down the lookout post to stop David from getting through. They need to check their fucking rule book, man. Like there's just he How thick is this thing? Surely it's not just a pamphlet, right? Mm-mm. It's like a whole binder that he keeps yeah. in the back of the truck. 
I mean, does he do this with every victim? It's an incredible question because if he is just winging all of this stuff, he might be the smartest person ever on film because everything seems so methodical and thought out, but he just happened upon this couple, right? Yeah. It's it's very confusing. Uh, I guess that's what he does when he's making that balloon animal is figuring out like, all right, these are the angles I can play. Like, this is what I'm trying to oh, teach to the couple. That's okay. There's a twist here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's like symbolic, right? He's taking a, 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 a straight balloon and, and, and identifying where all the twists and turns will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's my question. Oh, These fucking yeah. poor kids up at the fucking orphan camp, they're not going to get any of their seasoning. The barbe- He's got a whole... The barbecue is ruined. <laughs> yeah. He does say that the woods holds many predators. Just always watch the bunnies. And he put a bunny balloon in her hotel room, right? Is that because the bunnies will react first? Like they'll be able to sense the predators. So watch them and they'll they'll warn you. Yeah, maybe. Shit. So, like, fucking psychologically deep here on Five Day Rentals. Dan's adding stars the more you <laughs> go on. Bones. I'm up to, like, six right now, guys. Just saying. Damn, bro. That's like Batman Forever numbers. <laughs> Almost. Uh, we cut to Jack. He's fixing his freezer unit at the rest stop. A uh, gas station attendant comes out from taking a big old shit and sees Sylvia tied up to the big rig. She tells him to run, and Jack says, hey, can I talk to you inside for a little bit? And they go into the gas station. Uh, Back with David, he uses some good old Boy Scout rope knowledge to get this piece of wood that he could have moved with his fucking arms out of the way. Uh, Back to- He learned all this rope tying when he was an orphan up at the summer camp, so. (laughs) Oh, shit, that's another twist in that balloon animal. God damn it, Karan. Six and a half. Uh, Jack gets pissed at Sylvia and locks her in the meat locker in the trailer. David pulls into the rest stop, gets some gas, and slams a Sobe. <laughs> thought that was a Fruitopia for a minute. Oh, man. I fucking miss that's, Fruitopia. That's pull too. Uh, he notices something in the restaurant, uh, rest, rest stop and finds the gas station attendant. And just before sweet death, this gas station attendant shows David an alternate logging road to cut Jack off and stop him before he reaches the turnpike. And yes, I just said Jack off. Uh, David takes off. Really funny. Right when this guy dies, Dave is like, hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> Such a non secret, such a non reaction for a man dying in front of you. Oh no, sorry. Yeah. No, come on. I mean, oh, bummer, dude. Dave is taking this pretty well for what he's been through. He only gives a shit about himself and his comedy career. These two definitely break up, like later. Yeah. On. Oh, for sure. Sylvia is his mill ticket right now, though. Mm-hmm. Right. Babe, I wrote so many good bits on the road. What if he just like got his wallet back and then like got back in the car? <laughs> just gives her a wave and goes. I can't buy gas without this. <laughs> My social so they, security card's in here. They move in. They try it out for like six months. He's like, this isn't working. Then he meets some chick at a bar and he's got like four kids now. And he's like a truck driver. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like- They'll have a fight, and he'll bring up, like, hey, remember that time I fucking saved you from that fucking fat psycho driver? She'll be like, well, you know, like, I kind of survived myself, like, the whole time. Like, don't, that wasn't all on you. Well, that was your fault, if you think about it. Yeah, you got in the truck with him, okay? You kind of got us into that situation, Mm -hmm. Sylvia. Speaking of Sylvia, she's being slammed around by all the hanging meat and corpses in the meat locker. Because, yes, Buck, our cowboy 
coyote hunting ex-sheriff is back there as well. Uh, we also see the I, I body of Buck from earlier. You didn't see Buck? No, I didn't see that. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's why we can't cut the Buck, guys. Come on. <laughs> Kron, we'll wait. Go rewatch. I don't think of other people there. that hey, could have been back there. Yeah. Show me the evidence. I'll send you. Yeah, take a screenshot. Damn, yeah, this whole fucking category has been show me the evidence. At least, at least Bones provided a, a drop of paint on a truck bed. So I, I put white out on my TV. <laughs> I kind of believed him after that. Yeah, I did I too. I didn't say it, that because I didn't want to start a big argument. It's pretty solid evidence. It's not an argument. Yeah. You're not starting an argument if you agree with me. That's Yeah, that's, but then Kron coming to like, fuck no, dude, that's fucking dust from your TV or yeah, something. I'll, I'll never publicly admit that Bones was right. <laughs> you fucking heard it here, folk. <laughs> what a fucking... Well, he, he it's the season one takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> after 125 episodes... Bones gets a victory. <laughs> Fucking finally. <laughs> Sylvia starts uh, thinking up a plan here. She ties all the meat and the corpses together and starts slamming against the meat locker door. David is hauling assholes down these logging roads. Good thing roads. there were no regenerators hanging up in the oh, meat locker. Oh, shit, huh? dude. <laughs> and then Jeez. right when you think they're done, they turn into an Iron Maiden. Oh, Fuck, I hate that. Jack calls David to harass him some more. He says that uh, Sylvia is uh, too much of a woman for you, David. Uh, but the hard way is the best way. Uh, Sylvia, meanwhile, she st- or keeps trying to escape. Jack makes up his own uh, comical song here about the situation that they've all that he's created, pretty much. Song kind of uh, sucks, given Meatloaf's obvious talent. Well, it, it goes to prove that, uh, you know, Meatloaf didn't write Bad Out of Hell. Who was that, Steinman? Yeah. Same dude that did uh, one of Karan's picks, right? Uh, Phantom of the Paradise? Phantom of the Paradise. Wasn't that one of the, the writers for... I thought oh, that I was uh, Paul... What's his name? The guy who played... Kersey? <laughs> <laughs> Schroeder? Schrayball? I thought it was the same guy that wrote that. Paul Williams? Also writing. Oh, yeah. Paul was, Williams. I, I think it was Paul Williams. I think we had... I know I had some research about... Steinman? Yeah. We'll look it up later. Uh, one fucking but, episode. But that's remember. the takeaway from Bad Out of Hell, basically, right? It was like, Meatloaf performed it, but those songs were written and composed by... Somebody else. (laughs) This all. Hey, I'm I'm playing a psycho truck driver. Can you write me a nice ballad about uh, trying to keep a fucking toxic couple together? It's 2000, Marvin. (laughs) We're done. I'm probably dead. (laughs) Move on, dude. While all this is going on, both vehicles are hauling ass. David comes out to the main road and parks. He's two miles out from the turnpike, which says on the sign right behind him. Uh, he sit, sets up some uh, gas can cans. He calls Jack just as he's pulling up and holds a match up. Hey, Jack, it's time to slow down. And gentlemen, at this point, I would like for both of you to create a better line read than, hey, Jack, it's time to slow down. Can we do any better? Um, Something with like burn rubber. Um, hey, Jack, this one's for Topper. No. Uh, hey Maybe Jack, you're definitely not an ice road trucker. 
You're no Liam Neeson. Looks like you're on a highway to hell. Oh. You may be a bat out of hell, but it's time to stop. (laughs) It's time to slow down. Uh, Life is a lemon and I want my money back. I would do anything for love, but you won't do this. Jack is impressed. David lights up the gasoline, and Jack hits the brakes. He stopped him. David says, let her go. It's over with, Jack. So you actually... He said, it's all nice, but you actually have to stop me. Jack revs up Goliath. And as she's doing this, Sylvia finally busts through the meat locker door. Jack slams through the flames with Goliath and hits David's car and keeps on trucking. David jumps in the car and gets into goes into hot pursuit for the big rig. David catches up quick, and these two swerve back and forth on each other for Ooh, a while. Hot pursuit. You could work that into the flames. I really tried a lot of big rig terms as I went through these notes. So, if you've noticed, thank you. Sylvia uses a chainsaw to cut a fucking thank, hole through the you, trailer thank floor. You for she operates this fucking thing like she's a goddamn landscaper in real life. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. primes that I'm like thing, a motherfucking chokes it, chainsaw. gets it started, no what? problem. Yeah. A motherfucking chainsaw. What? Does seem like she cuts a relatively small square to... Well, she's tiny. Hey, you know, she wants a, to feel, it feels good. She feels thing. good about it, you know? She yeah, feels thin if she like, fits through that hole. Oh. Yeah, I can fit through there. Yeah. And if not, I'm going to make it work. Big enough for her, but not big enough for Jack to fit through. Mm -hmm. What year did Sex in the City come out? It had to be shortly after this, right? That's what I'm thinking, too. It's probably pretty close. I'm thinking like maybe 2002, 2003. It's probably like 2012, watch. All right. 98. Fuck, really? Really? Yeah, she must, she must have already been signed on. Maybe, yeah, maybe this was like in the can, but you know they were waiting for her to get big to put this on Canadian. She was like, TV. "Well, I don't know if that sex show is going to work, so I'm doing blacktop." Uh, she cuts a uh, as she cuts the hole in the trailer floor. She also cuts the brake lines of Goliath. Suck on this, Jack. This causes Jack to lose control and bust a few tires. Jack calls David and says, Hey, man, your lady's fucking crazy. Uh, But we need to stop the truck because she literally cut the fucking brake lines. David pulls into front of Goliath and hits the brakes. David finally gets up up close enough to Jack where they're kind of like side are in front of each other. Uh, But Jack fucking's like, fuck this, starts ramming him and speeds up. And starts pushing David's car and trying to smash it. David finally spins out. Jack nearly, or Jack comes to a stop, but you guessed it. The cab of his truck is hanging over a giant bluff. This is one hell of a scenic view, he says, laughing. David pulls up, yells, Sylvia! (laughs) Which he has about 28 times. It's kind of comical. Sylvia! Uh, Jack tries to back the truck up with no luck. Sylvia gets smart and starts to head out through the hole that she cut in the trailer as David tries to pull the connection between the cab and the trailer. With a few failed tries, he finally gets the job done. This causes the cab to fall off the bluff. Is that all you Game need over. to disconnect the trailer from a truck? Yeah, you're just pulling that. There's a little pin that you pull, but Is you that- normally have you have to pull that while the truck pulls forward. Oh, gotcha. Because I was going to say, I was because he, I was going to be. He sees that truck do it in the beginning. Sorry, yeah. I was going to be unhooking every truck at every gas station. <laughs> Fucking coat. Just get a long. Yeah, just get a long one, dude. Roll your window down while you're driving. Just, me and a stretched out coat hanger just fucking <laughs> doing work out there. 
<laughs> Watch out, Kron. You might get arrested. Sylvia escapes from the trailer. They hug. And David says, let's do the love thing and the 2.5 kids thing. The kiss. Creepy fairy tale chime. Give me my wallet back. <laughs> as the big rig sinks into the river. Bravo. Bravo. We hear as our end credits roll. Ladies and gentlemen, from the year 2000, Blacktop. It's kind of like the masterpiece line from the end of Inglorious Bastards, but a lot less effective. Mm -hmm. I was thinking Apocalypse Now, the horror, the horror. It's kind of like Bravo, Bravo. Not the end scene, though, I guess. Upon further research, gentlemen, this was released in 2000. The title of the movie is Blacktop, and the director's name is T.J. Scott. Meatloaf was born in 1947, and he died in 2022. And that's all I got. That fe- it. F- Damn. I would have guessed, like, 21 or 20. Like, time's so fucking weird now. Guys, is it time for America's favorite game? No, it's time for Canadian television audience's favorite game. Mm-hmm. Oh, that must be Rate My Letterbox. Rate My Letterbox. Rate My Box. Rate me up Cron. 1.5. Dan, 2.0. Dan, 2.0. Bones, 2.0. I got, I got Kron at a 1.5. I got Bones at a 2.0. Phil, is this movie uh, is just boring. It just it it suffers uh, despite some of its elements. I do think Meatloaf is doing a little something with the material. I do think the other two leads are a little stale um, by comparison. I think maybe made not for television and maybe you could add a little bit of uh, a spice in there um particularly maybe with with violence and 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 terror but it's such a an odd uh i'll say this logically speaking it works a lot out he locks the cell phone he steals the key he does Everything seems like really plotted out and then they fill in like what the emotional arc of this whole thing is supposed to be. And Dan, you even hinted at it. Like these are not people that you as the audience feel are deserving of like getting back together after this. And at the end of it, you just know in six months, eh, it's nothing, you know, it should have, they set them up to be already tumultuous. Like it should have been that they were in, super love with each other and then they had a fight and it led to this right not they were already but just despite that the fucking uh motion sickness because of dutch angle roll to another dutch angle um i was thinking a lot of the brain <laughs> while watching this i was like there's like fun stuff here but I it's as well. it's just fucking dull um uh, I will tell you this: no Wikipedia entry. It's like listed in the filmography, but there ain't no blue link. Um, this was a tough one to get through. I genuinely considered, like, I think I'm just gonna watch this the once. Uh, I really had to to suffer through that that second viewing, and I it was it was no better for it. So I am a one point five.
All right, guys. Uh, Blacktop. Uh, yeah, I kind of got to agree with Bones. Like, at the end of the day, this thing is just kind of boring. Um, it's not like a terrible movie. Like, the structure is okay. Um, there is, like, action that propels the story, but it is just all kind of bland and there's not much to it. Um, I do think without meatloaf this would be entirely unwatchable like for as kind of amateur acting that he is um he at least is bringing an element of entertainment to this thing um but i don't know at the end of the day it's just kind of like the general plot of breakdown with one psycho scene thrown in for good measure and a little bit of like Tyler Durden's I'm going to teach you to appreciate your life kind of shit. Um, so I don't know. It's all just like a mishmash of unentertaining, uh, you know, stuff that I've already seen done a lot better somewhere else. Um, I will say, especially at the beginning of the movie, there is some kind of like entertainment value in, I don't know, this guy doing comedy at a truck stop basically and just... This kind of uh, a bunch of weird scenes that are funny uh, if you're, you know, looking to kind of watch something that's poorly structured. Uh, I think at the end of the day, I would be a two on this. It's not a great movie, but there was enough sprinkled throughout that made me chuckle that I can give this a little bit extra leeway. 2.0. Gentlemen, I agree. <clears throat> These are two characters that you just don't really give a fuck about. Like, why? If I was a killer, I think after I got this couple in the trucks, I'd be like, yeah, never mind. I'm just going to kill them both. Because, yeah. I, and that whole thing is strange to me as well of why he even does this. And I wish there was kind of a history... Instead of like the whole parents thing, I wish he would have kind of had a history of why he was doing this. I guess that could have been a reason the history or his parents, but also have like, oh, I've killed like 17 women or, you know, something along those lines. Um, I agree. If Meatloaf wasn't in this, yeah, you, this would have probably never even came up on five day rentals, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, I think there's enough goofy shit in here to at least make a decent show out of it. And that's kind of what I thought whenever I picked it. It does have a platter of sandwiches, though. So, I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. I'm, I'm a 2.0. It's, it's mildly entertaining. But at the end of the day, I mean, you're not going to go buy it on DVD, Brantley. <laughs> I had a message from Brantley the other day that said, is Blacktop your pick for the next movie? With a picture of the DVD of him holding it. And I said, yes, it is. You own that movie, question mark. And he said, I was at the thrift store today. And I just happened to be browsing through the DVDs and picked it up. And I was like, that's totally a Dan pick. Like, I'm going to ask if this is the next pick. And he's like, I fucking bought it, you know, just to have it. So I texted, or I texted him back later on. And I was like, dude, you should totally watch it tonight and come on the show tomorrow. And he's like, oh, man, I got other stuff going on. But and I was like, God. But Brantley does own a copy of Blacktop on DVD. So thank you, Brantley. We he knows you. us better than we know ourselves. <laughs> That's what I said. Seems that way. It's fucking creepy. Uh, but I was like, man, that's awesome. Dan, you said something about, and Cron, I'll get to the scores in a minute, or I know why you're calculating averages, um, about like why he does it and the history of, of his killings and the psychological damage with his parents. 
I thought it kind of would have been cool if maybe it hinted at like I've tried this 17 times and I'm not giving up like I'm I'm going to succeed like that's why he's killed as many women as he had like he has put them through this test and they always fail and if there was something like that at the end when David catches him and his sort of like relief and like acceptance would have kind of folded in on itself and like made sense like I think there could have been something to like he did it he won you're more you're more watching his arc and they're the character you know they're the side characters in his story I yeah. think might have been a I think if you had gone at it from that angle, maybe it would have connected a little bit more, you know, if if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I got you. Le- leading with, you know, it, reverse it. And he's the protagonist of this story. And and they are simply just side characters. But they, well, yeah, they kind of get that feeling. He's build main bill. So, you know. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Uh, Blacktop would have an average score from the three of us of 1.83. This would end up on the big list at number 93. (laughs) This would be right below Humanoids from the Deep at 92 and right above Robot Jocks at number 94. Uh, Guys, without counting... The five-star banger category films we have covered on this podcast in season one, 104 films. Fuck yeah. You're welcome. Just for those playing at home, your top ten would be Unhinged, Prince of Darkness, The Running Man, Apocalypto. Big Trouble in Little China, Extreme Prejudice, Tremors, Amsterdam, Rad, and Maniac Cop 2. It's a solid fucking top 10. That's a good weekend film festival. Hell yeah. Kron, are you ready for Rate My Letterbox scores? I am indeed. Dan finished with a 1.0, and you and I got a 1.5. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, This very extended segment of uh, the Rate My Letterbox game would end up with Bones winning this round with 25.5 points. I would be in second place with 24.5 points. Dan very respectable 23 and hey going all the way back to our vibrations episode george heffler from the best little horror house in philly <laughs> coming in with 2.5 points way to go george you did it dan you ready to fuck mary kill oh yeah gentlemen with this category of Revenge 4, The Return of the Big Rigs, we covered Breakdown, 1997, Mad Max Fury Road from 2015, and Blacktop from 2000. I am going to fuck Mad Max Fury Road. I'm going to marry Breakdown and I'm going to kill Blacktop. I'm killing Blacktop. Oh, go ahead. I, I couldn't agree more. That's exactly how I would have it. Mary Breakdown, uh, fuck Mad Max, kill Blacktop. I, I'm I'm just flipping the Mary and fuck. I'm going to marry Mad Max and, and break Breakdown is a fuck, man. That's a, that's a solid fuck. Solid category, man. Good diversity okay. in this bad boy. I know there's some breakdown-ish elements in Blacktop, but uh, 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 quality might be the uh, main distinguishment of, of the two, though. Yeah, I think it just goes to show what 
getting really good actors into a movie can do for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, characters you care about. You know, just uh, in general, people doing their jobs well. That's a good thing mm-hmm. to see on screen. Yeah. There's only so much storylines with big rig movies as well, though. You know? Hey, I it, was... I was pushing pretty hard for road games, which is extremely similar to Breakdown. So, you know, there there are only so many stories you can tell on the open road. I I think it's a uh, it's a category that will return. There's no doubt, and I think there's a deep pool of of, of big rigs storylines that we can dig into. I just can't name anything off because I don't want to give anything away. About reserve oh, oh, big rig uh, picks. Bleep mine out then when I said that earlier title. <laughs> Guys, I mean it's kind of it's kind of in our blood, right? We're our podcast is basically truck movies and puppet movies. <laughs> yeah. We need to change that. But here's the thing. Are any of those in the top ten? I guess uh big trouble. Mm-hmm. Big troubles there. Uh, uh, I mean, if I had read out, let's see, breakdown is at number eleven, so yeah, I mean, almost unhinged is kind of a road movie. Mm-hmm. It's got yeah, it's got it's got a core element of of what you got in, in blacktop and breakdown. All right, guys, that's fucking season one did it it's fucking weird we made it two and a half years later <laughs> god damn we do we do we do a, a a little sappy goodbye now or do we wait do we I, we're I think coming we gotta we gotta rewind coming up yeah so okay we save it for that we'll have a uh, thunder in paradise next week dk's coming back y'all yeah we're calling him out he's coming back returning champion dk I think he's gonna do that uh old lady character again that wasn't him gonna, that was the old lady what are you that, talking yeah about? that wasn't him that was that real old lady that we were in there. oh yeah. okay yeah <laughs> remember we recorded all those cold opens while we were on vacation that mm-hmm. really all happened <laughs> yeah people don't realize the cold opens actually happen yeah those are that's from life. when we worked at the video store like this is like a weird timeline thing yeah that's just us hit and record on the yeah on the stores a microphone system Mm -hmm. we uh yeah we got a break coming up whatever no big deal your feed's gonna be fine you'll live yeah you don't you don't like it anyway so get us out of here folks as always rate and review the show it helps us out it helps the show out it helps get more people involved and that's what we want um you can find us on instagram you can find us on Sp- spotify yeah <laughs> anywhere you get your fucking things you can find us on twitter um well you got you that can find us there's those question things in spotify now i don't know like who gets that does it go to podbean like who you guys notice that know. you can like leave reviews or questions yeah okay you can ask us a question. Yeah, somebody do that. Yeah, Spotify. somebody. Yeah, we will answer back. Yeah. Um, right. You could find us on Discord. There's a link on every episode drop. Uh, that's where, if you really want to fuck with us, that's where to find us. Or marry us, or kill us. Yeah, you know, whichever. Do, rate us. Do the fuck marry kill on all three hosts. We would love to to hear that. I want to die. Uh, check out I, horror drafts. You can find all three joke. of us I wanna, I wanna die. on their feed, uh, doing horror remakes, animals attacks, and Bones's horror draft, where he showed his artistic side. Oh, that's that, some of the that, stuff he was. That thing on. fucking blew out of the wind like fucking Kurt Russell nutting on the back of a big rig. That thing that fucking killed episode. killed their shit Dude, that was is your theory that that's kurt russell's nut in the back of that truck <laughs> no no i have I'm... enough time for that that is crazy 
Dan had that. Check out those episodes. That's They're the great. Tyler Durden element. He was in, or it was a Shining, you know, like Whoa, he was in the Jesus cab Christ. the whole time. Dan, add that to the conspiracy theory section of Discord. <laughs> okay. Season two has got, we can't have any of this. Hey, add that, add that. Like we got to streamline, right? Bones, Ladies and gentlemen. Bones, add that new rule to. One, one last thing I'm going to ask you guys. I'm going to ask this now. We'll cut it out if you say no. I would be interested to see. I don't want movie selections. I don't want any of that. Is is if you're in the Discord, is there anything about the show that you really like that you would like to get more of? And is there anything in the show that you think like doesn't work? Like be on like we have a customer complaint box channel. Like and that to me was like the intent of it. So like I'd be interested to see what people would want out of five day rentals in season two. Just just throwing it out there, like, because we value that back and forth. So, like, what's going to keep you coming back, right? Let us know. Let, let us know. We're not going to hate. More jizz. Less We're cussing. appreciate. No cold and opens. I, to, to, if you don't like the cold, you, yeah, we're looking for any reason to cut time. I don't need to do that. I will be releasing the first category of season two on the rewind. So stay tuned for that. But other than that, gentlemen, for the last time in season one, I guess there's only one more thing to say. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. I saluted my my co-hosts. It's like real, it's real emotional. It's like, oh, they're saluting back now too. It's like fucking taps in here, bro. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. Lieutenant Dan. They're giving my mother a folded flag. (laughs) Was I dead the whole time? I'll I'll do puppet now. I got puppet in the car.